Hi, I'm Samuel. Hi, I'm Fiona. This is our family. Abrena who's 16. Aaron who's 40. Elisa who is 30. And Ephraim who is 7. Abrena and Aaron are on the spectrum of autism. And this is our family of hope. We started to know about Abrena when she first went to kindergarten. The kindergarten principal actually had a meeting with us and uh, told us, have you heard of autism? And then they slowly explained to me what autism was, but I could not really digest at that moment what they were telling me. All I knew was that my daughter was not normal and for the first time, it was being brought to my face. So we brought Abrina to a, a recommended pediatrician. We went there with uh, one child to be diagnosed and we came out with two children diagnosed. <laughs> We really didn't know about this because our routine was both of us were working. We would send our kids to my parents. Then at night when we were done with our work, we pick them up. We were in denial, completely, completely in denial. And then you have uh, grandparents who know something is not right, but they could not voice it out. That would have helped us probably detect our two children's disorders earlier. Yeah, so for example, when she was first born, the nights usually when babies cry, so Abriana did not cry. Instead, what she did do was... She will rub her two toes to kiss each other. And she rubbed it so, so hard. hard it, it, it bruised either, both, both the heels actually. So we thought it was quite normal for a child to do that. We didn't know it was not normal. Abriana and Irina are very different on the spectrum. When Abriana likes to have a quiet, Aaron likes to have sound. They both take turns in controlling the environment. So we're always trying to find a balance of how to manage both of their need for control, at the same time trying to give them normalcy around them so that they could have a good day. So Abrina likes to ask for hugs and uh, she doesn't really seem to know who to ask and who not to ask. She just goes and says, give me a hug. And most of the time, the people give her a hug. But there are times also when the person does not feel comfortable. So there's this one instant when she did try to ask for hugs. This other person didn't want to give her a hug. The person actually said, maybe next time. And Ibrina got a bit shocked and was like, you know, she didn't really know how to process that. I'm very thankful that she didn't melt down, which she could have. While it's okay to ask for a hug from someone you know, it would be good to not spend too much of time on the hug itself because sometimes there are people who can take advantage of our children. What we could do instead is high five, Bye. fist bump, whatever else Just works. Like yeah, and it, it helps to keep her safe, keep any child safe. So playtime was a little bit difficult. Um, Ibriana, when she did want to try to play, the little girls that didn't really know how to play with her to a point even kind of told her no you sit down you don't move you sit down there so she just crouched in the corner not moving not not wanting and uh, she just did that i know that those girls could actually play with her and i know that Abrina actually can play with her it's just that there was no education on either part on how to bridge that gap so in this situation um Children can actually be the, the game changer. Their awareness or their acceptance of children who are not like them, who are socially different, that will help you know, the whole uh, journey of this child with the special needs. And that actually comes from the home, where parents can actually speak to them, educate them, and tell them to, to actually normalize the situation and not to freak out and like, oh, this child is different. What we do at home makes a lot of difference. Playtime would be very successful if we could just maybe even include the special needs child with just one portion of the playtime. You know, whether it's just throwing a ball or just, just saying, hi, how are you? And it actually empowers the special needs child to want to be with the gang. With the gang. With the gang. Yeah. The inclusion. Yeah. yeah. So there's one time when we all of us went to this banana leaf restaurant. Aaron picked up the banana leaf, literally, and was waving across like an aeroplane. You know, he likes flying things like the dragon uh, or the plane and everyone was were looking at him because. because there were sounds added there's a wailing sound that he does with the waving so the waiters the neighbors the, the other patrons were just looking at him thinking what's happening with this 14 year old a teenager why is he doing this it can be embarrassing sometimes for the parent 
But I think uh, we need to take courage and say this is okay. Yeah. We need to convince ourselves so that others will be convinced. Yeah. When we take courage and say it's okay to be different, it's okay to be yeah, so it's not normal. It'll be helpful if you if you happen to see a meltdown child on the spectrum, just offer help, be kind, say some kind words. Can I help you? Uh, is there anything you need? But don't stare. But don't stare. Try and, not to know, stare. Try not to film. Film. That's. Uh, it's just an invasion of, yeah. of, of uh, privacy. Yeah. Yeah. We were just very broken parents. We couldn't go out of our house and we had no idea how to live anymore. I went crying to church and the person that, was, that met me at church told me, Hey Tiona, I can help you. And that started our journey to uh, Early Autism Project Malaysia. And my first session, I just saw my son transition from table to play on his own. And he played with toys for the first time. I just started crying and we saw that. And you're talking about a child here who doesn't cooperate. I was shocked that he could cooperate and it gave me hope. Early Autism Project Malaysia taught me that I could hope for better days with my family. So these methods of scheduling, showing pictures, social stories, all these methods were actually taught to us by EAP. So when the child is taken care of that way, family becomes healthier. So it's not just the child, but the family is also in a good place. Just being around the child with special needs is like stepping into heaven because they have a high level of innocence and they have purity in their hearts. And just being around them, you get this sense of the goodness of life. You have just found out that your child's not, not normal. Let me just encourage you now that the earlier you start to educate yourself on autism, the earlier you start that journey, it would actually empower you to live that life that you want with your child.